Hey everybody, Erin from The Impatient Gardener. Today we're going to talk about watering again. I wonder if there's any topic I've covered more on the blog and on YouTube than watering. And it's because I'm a little obsessive about it. Not that I'm that obsessive about watering. It's that I'm obsessive with finding tools that work for watering. Uh, last year I did a video that was um, pretty popular and a lot of people shared their thoughts on it. And this is essentially an update to that video with what I'm still using, uh, what I found, what many of you have suggested. Um, because I think all gardeners are on the search for good watering tools. So all I want from watering tools is things that, first of all, I want to buy things that last more than one season. Even if it's extremely inexpensive, buying things that I know will be thrown away after four or five months is difficult for me to wrap my brain around. I would rather spend more money on something that's going to last me for many years than something than far less money on something that's going to go straight to the dump, you know? So one, I want durability. Two, I just don't want to be leaked on. I'm so sick of water. This is my biggest pet peeve. Water that leaks out of whatever fitting you have, down your arm, whatever. It's all bad, drives me nuts, really gets on my nerves. And then I just want good water water pressure coming out of things. So that probably leads me to like the most obvious thing here, which is that it's quite clear to me because we're having some interesting like well pump issues. Not exactly sure what's going on. We don't think our well pump is working as well as it has in the past. So we've had some kind of fluctuating water pressure. So I think it's safe to say that any watering tool you use is the performance of it is directly related to how good of water pressure you have. So if you have great water pressure, probably almost any tool is going to seem great. And if you have kind of iffy water pressure, you're going to have to look a little harder for something that's going to work really well for you. So uh, this, first of all, I just happen to have this on the hose. So first of all, um, my hose preference has not changed. I'm still using the water right hoses, although they come in three um, sizes. I had the skinniest size in the vegetable garden and I actually um, had to move that one out because uh, it was just there was not enough water pressure to really do anything. Uh, so that water that we have in the vegetable garden runs all the way from our house underground so it's quite a run over to the vegetable garden and it just wasn't giving me enough water pressure um, once it was going through that skinny hose. So this one is the same hose that I now have in the vegetable garden. This is the um, this is the 5 8 inch one, I think. I'm gonna, I'll put all that stuff in the description so you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is the medium size water right hose, um, which has worked well for everything. Now, uh, this is a new nozzle, nozzle this year. It's small, it's heavy, it's made by Gecka, and uh, it's super, what I like about it is that it's one of those deals where you can really dial it in and it's got a really good jet on it. So I rarely, this is what I use for cleaning stuff. Obviously I'm not watering plants. By the way, it's going, let's see if I can move the camera for you. You can see just how far this baby's. I mean, it's basically going almost all the way across the driveway. Okay, so this is not obviously what I use to water plants, but I do like having, I mean, you could use it on this, by the way, that's a good mist, which is currently misting all over me. Anyway, I use that mostly for cleaning off the patio, cleaning off stuff, um, just quick uh, rinsing off the insects, off the siding and stuff. It's much better pressure on the jet setting than any other um, uh, watering wands that I have. So we actually keep this one around. Now, let's just get to my favorite watering um, discovery of the year. If you recall, Last year, I was talking about how I love Quick Connects. I thought I had landed on Quick Connects that I really loved, and then I had like an epic blooper in the, <laughs> the middle of that video. Right now, so. Ah! <laughs> so We're not gonna repeat that today because this is my new favorite Quick Connect. I have replaced all the Quick Connects. This is also made by Gecka. Gecka is a German company, by the way, which is just now starting to bring its products into the United States. Um, so it finally has a distributor to help them out with that. Um, they're super heavy, nothing plastic in these. Uh, but this one, first of all, there's two things I like about this. First of all, 
um, it's you can spin your tool inside of there so um, your hose doesn't get wrapped in circles so not all of them allow you to actually pivot your water wand this they make two kinds so make sure you get the right one this one actually stops the water so you don't have to turn off the water at the hose or kink your hose um, which is to me key okay so here we go we're not going to have the issue we had last year which remember i got water all over myself see no water all over Aaron. So that's the stopper ones, which is absolutely fabulous. Hey everybody, just popping in, get it? They're poppies, I'm popping in. Hey, if you're loving this video, we do me a favor and hit that like button. It really does help on YouTube um, for you guys to hit those buttons. It tells YouTube that people are liking this video and it helps more people see it. And I'd certainly appreciate it. And if you love what you're seeing here and you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button too. Thank you so much for your support. It's a big deal. All right, let's talk about uh, watering wands. Probably every gardener's main tool that they're using, I would guess, almost every every day. My go-to for several years has been the DRAM. Um, DRAM is made in the USA, actually just north of me uh, by about 40 minutes. Um, and they have a couple of things that I like on this particular one. I don't remember what this model is called, but first of all, I like this slider function right here. Um, I don't want to have to hold anything, so I quite like that. And this is the Selecta stream thing. So they've got mist, fan, shower, center, cone, all those things. But here's the thing that I found. I only use it on the rain one or the shower one. I only ever use it on shower because the only other jet I ever use, I mean, the only other setting I ever use is the jet one. And now I've got that great jet tool that works so much better. So although I like having this, I never use any of the other ones. The other thing that's been a bit of an issue this year is that I've gone through several of these that I bought in spring already this year. Um, had some issues with durability on these, with these starting to leak at um, different spots in it. Um, now, I did read something from Dram. I wonder if this isn't common because I did read something that they put on Instagram about, you know, make sure you're using these right, which means don't drag your hose around by your wand. You're supposed to hold your wand. I totally do that. I totally drag them around by, you know, by the wand. Um, and you know, don't, and I throw them on the ground, I throw them on the patio. So I do abuse them. So that's been just a point of frustration for me this year. Um, the other water one, let me show you the other water wand that I'm trying out this year. So this guy is from Gecka. You might've seen Laura over at Garden Answer try out some of these. This is the Dram. I find this to be much lighter. I always figure anything lighter is better when you're hauling stuff around the garden. Um, same type of slider uh, valve here. This is quite a nice uh, gentle rain. It works best for when you're watering right up next to plants. Not try If you're trying to like, here I am pushing this out of the frame for you guys. If you're trying to like shoot it far, um, of course then you wouldn't be using that rain setting. So anyway, uh, quite happy with this. Uh, this one definitely works better for me in terms of consistent water coming out of it on um, the bigger hoses. This is actually the biggest size of the water right hose. Um, honestly, if I were rebuying my water right hoses and they are expensive, but I think they are worth every penny and they come in good colors, which is kind of a thing for me, I'd buy all the big ones. Even though they're heavier, it's worth it. Anyway, next up is sprinklers. You guys, sprinklers are gonna kill me this year. We had a period of sustained drought here. Um, really, really kind of, it, we're actually still in a, we're still down six or seven inches um, on average rainfall. So it's been dry here and I've got a lot of new plantings. We're trying to grow grass. Um, and that's when you need a sprinkler. And I've been so frustrated with sprinklers this year. This is the sprinkler that I showed in last year's video. We had just bought it. I was super excited about it. There are features about it I love. I love the adjustable height. I love that it sits high so you can really um, hit a, a broad area. And I don't know what the deal is, but this thing doesn't work this year. Uh, what it does is it seems to leak a whole bunch right at the top fitting here. And it does not, it's a, it's a ratcheting one, or it has a ratchet type in it it gets stuck. So it'll go all the way one direction and then it gets stuck. 
and it just shoots that direction. If there is a way to fix it, I haven't found it yet, but I haven't like exactly pulled it apart. I don't feel like for what I paid for this, which if I recall was about 50 bucks, I don't feel like after like three months of using it, you should have to pull something apart. So this thing, not, I mean, such a good, so good in so many ways and so bad in that it doesn't do the main thing it needs to do, which is water evenly. I did ask for sprinkler suggestions from people and a couple of people brought up this one. I have another dram sprinkler that is uh, like almost like a dial. Doesn't work. Don't like it. However, this one is pretty interesting to me. Pretty simple. Maybe simple is better. You basically get four different patterns here. You get mini fan, flat and large. These little uh, tabs on the side uh, help you you know, that tells you how far it's going to go around. Um, and you just, you can ch daisy chain them too. I've never done that with sprinklers. Have you guys ever daisy chained sprinklers? I haven't, but you can, there's a setting for that. And this guy works great. If this head were mounted on top of this tripod, my life would be almost perfect as far as sprinklers go. Oh, one quick note on the sprinklers. One of the things that a lot of people suggested to me um, on Instagram was that they have had great luck with antique sprinklers, which makes a ton of sense because I feel like a lot of water pressure is kind of a new thing. I don't know. Anyway, look for antique water sprinklers. I'm gonna keep an eye out um, and see if I can find one sometime and give it a shot. Um, I don't need fancy, I just need something that works. Okay, now we're gonna get into what I consider to be sort of watering gadgets, kind of. Um, you might have seen me talk about this on Instagram. This is this thing called Plant Surge. It is, what it is, it's just magnets, right? Uh, I put mine at the bib end, they're heavy, so I don't really want to haul something else around. So the idea is magnetize water, it helps the water molecules um, sort of clump together in a different way. This all sounds very strange. Um, but I'm going to tell you, I think there's something to this. So I came across Plant Surge because I was actually watching Bunny Guinness's video about Plant Surge. And I was curious. And it was the middle of the night and I ordered three of them. And it turns out I got an email from the company who said, hey, we just opened up shipping to the United States. It's a company based in the UK. And uh, thanks for being our first customer in the US. So it turns out that I, I bought the first three that were here, but I reached out to the company. I said, hey, tell me more. So they've, I've been talking to them a lot, really very nice people um, about how this all works. And I did do uh, my own personal little completely unscientific trial where I grew two sets of tomato seeds, same varieties, one, just watered with regular tap water, one were watered with water from the plant surge. And um, by the time the seedlings were, I hadn't even bumped them up in their pots yet. Um, by the time they were maybe this tall, it was quite clear to me that the plant surge plants were way ahead of the other plants. The stems were thicker, the plants were taller, they had better color on them. Um, everything about those plants was enough to tell me that um, I just wanted these on everything. So I now have these on every hose. And the company just told me that they are coming out with a second, a new version of this, which is um, going to be made with 100% recycled plastic. So it's going to be a touch lighter. The magnets are heavy though. And they are changing the design because one of the things they found is that our hoses here in the United States are much bigger. Um, so they do make a sort of a industrial sized one that I have on one of my hoses. I'll show you both of them uh, next to each other here. So you can see the difference in size. This new one is going to fit a wide range of hose sizes. So um, they don't have that ready yet. I had asked if they, if they had one ready that they could send and they're not quite there yet, but that is coming out probably in a few months. So Plant Surge is new to me this year. I've been happy with it. Oh, and they never go, and this is the other thing. Once you buy them, you have them forever. They're never gonna like wear out or you're never gonna have to repurchase them. So there's that. Um, and. They, and because I started this relationship with the company, they did uh, give me a code to pass along to you guys. So for 10% off, uh, you can use the code. That's all in the description. So I love my little rain barrel. This is on the back corner of the garage. It's weedy and scary back here, kind of. Um, it sits on a little tree stump. And uh, this is how I water the majority of the garden by the garage actually is just from this rain barrel off the water that comes off our garage. It's amazing 
how much water you can get from that. But there's always been one problem, which is that I had this valve, this top one, the little switchy valve, um, to connect the hose to, and it's very hard to move. So what I did was I put it in the open position, ignore the ash tree here. I put it in the open position and then I bought one of these guys. And this is a valve that goes like that. And it's perfect. It was really cheap. I'll put a link to it. And I don't know why every valve isn't like that. Like why haven't we been doing the whole, that the whole time instead of these, but, um, it just worked out perfectly. So anytime I need a little you know, on off valve at a hose bib from now on, I'm just going to get one that looks like that. All right, let's talk timers real quick. So last year when I made this video, I was in search of a decent timing system for the drip system in the garden. Several people recommended this orbit beehive system. So I did get that and uh, well, it's better than what I had. It's completely imperfect. It all runs off of an app, which I quite like, but I had to buy separate units for each zone, which seems a little ridiculous to me. Um, each one of those units is not that cheap. So long story short, I've had issues with two of the units and I've had to replace two of the units this year. Um, and unfortunately the problem is you don't realize that until all of a sudden you see a water issue in your garden because when you put these things in, you expect them to work. So that's where I get frustrated. I did, you know, and one of the things about drip systems is they're great, but, and they're a huge time saver, but they are not just set them and forget them. You have to check on them constantly. Um, so all sorts of issues with that. It's been really frustrating. On top of that, those units have been very hard to get. Um, in fact, most places they're sold out. There should be about $39 when you buy them. I saw them for sale on places like Amazon for over $100 because you can't find them anywhere. So I just feel like there, there is a market out there for somebody to invent a decent timing system for a multiple zone drip system. It should not be this hard. So really frustrated with that one. Always in, in looking for great suggestions on that. This is the best I've found so far. Obviously, there's a long way to go on it. Okay, so do check out last year's video, which I will link to in the description as well as up here, here, um, because the comments were so full of good information, but also because there's some to gardening watering tools that I use there that I didn't bring up this year um, because they're still my favorites. They still work the same. One of those is my Gardener Supply uh, Blue watering can. It's three gallons. I think last year I said it was two gallons. It's three gallons. It's the best. My advice with that always is take the rose off and like store it or throw it away because it just takes too long for the water to come out of that. Uh, so make sure you check out that video and then please continue to leave great comments with your favorite watering tools and what's working great for you. Um, that is where I got a lot of the new things that I've added in here um, as well as just some tips for things to look for. So it's a great source and I certainly appreciate it. All right, you guys have a great day in your garden, whether you're watering or weeding or whatever you're doing. I hope it's a good one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.